Good day everyone. Today we'll be resealing the front forks of this Honda CRF 125. It's a 2014 model and it has the right way up forks. Now pretty much all the little Hondas have the same design front forks. Not all of them will have this boot and not all of them will be this long, but the idea is the same and the design is the same as well. We need some very basic tools today, a socket set, spanners and wrenches, and a vise if you've got one is mandatory for pulling one of these apart. Of course, we need some fork oil as well. I've got a liter here. We've got new oil seals, which of course we need, and new dust seals. Make sure you get both of those. And I've got a torque wrench as well for tightening everything up to the correct specs. Other than that, it's a fairly straightforward job. So let's get started. Okay, to get us started, we'll get these two bolts and remove this caliper here. Now these are a 12 mil socket. And they're quite tight, turns out. So get them off. Okay, we'll just push that caliper out of the way. And we've got a couple more bolts here holding that brake line on. Now they are an eight mil socket. Okay, we'll just grab that caliper, send it up, and we'll just hang it up this top section here. Okay, the axle nut is a 19 and the bolt is a 14. I'll just separate the two. Now we should be able to slide that shaft out with relative ease. It should be fairly lubricated. There we go. Good chance to check your wheel bearings while you're here and clean everything up when we put it all back together, but we'll just put that aside. Okay, when it comes to removing the fork leg, we have a couple of pinch bolts here. They're a 12 mil head and they are holding the suspension into the frame of the bike. Now we also have to undo this here while we're here so we don't clamp any of this in the vise. We'll actually crack this while we're here. We can remove the handlebars and crack it with a spanner or what I'm gonna do here is undo both of these, slide it down most of the way, tighten this one back up and then use a spanner in here to avoid having to remove the handlebars. So that's what we'll do. Let's see how well that goes. Okay, I'm just gonna tighten up this pinch bolt again. It's my little clamp for now. Okay, so this top cap here is a 17 millimeter and we'll just crack it off. So just having to do it in the vise later. That'll be plenty. We can go ahead and then re-loosen this pinch bolt and release the suspension like that. Okay, first things first, we just need to loosen off this little clamp here as much as we can. And we just pop the end of this boot off the strut there and we slide it all the way off. Okay, when we remove the dust seal here, we're just gonna use a small screwdriver or a seal pick. It's not very tight in the bore of the suspension cylinder there. We can just prise it out and then push it along the chrome rod and dispose of it. We won't need that again. We have a six mil in hex socket here to undo this in hex bolt. Now the bolt may spin freely inside the barrel. We may need to push on the chrome rod a little bit and put a little bit of weight on it to make sure it turns. Or if you have to, you can use an impact gun to spin it out if it's just turning inside the barrel. I was pretty lucky here. It actually came out straight away. And there is a copper washer on the end of the bolt. Mine didn't have one, but it is inside the barrel and it was held in with a little bit of elastic or something. We just need to pull that out, clean it, and reuse it if it is good, and change it if it's not. There'll be a bit of oil in there, of course. We drain that out, and the two parts are actually separate now. So once that bolts out, they will separate. Be careful handling them out of the vise, and we can pull that chrome rod straight out. Okay, with this piece out, there is a piece that goes on the end. Just make sure we don't lose that. It does normally stay inside the tube. It might come out, it might not. And of course we've got the bolt as well. Now we loosen this earlier. So we're gonna stand this up in the vise above the bucket because it is gonna drip oil. We're gonna take this off and there'll be a big graduated spring to come out. We'll clean everything and then we can put new seals on. If you don't wanna take any of that apart, you don't actually have to. We can just change the seals and put this all back together. But of course, it's always best to pull it entirely apart. We'll get our oil levels right and we'll make sure everything's clean and tidy 
and put it back together. Okay, getting the seal out of the tube, there is a circlip in here. I can just remove with a screwdriver. Now when it comes to getting the seal out, we just need to get a little rolling head pry bar in there and we can just slowly work it around and just pop it out like that. Comes out fairly well. We've got a flat face here. And on this side, we have the spring. Now the spring goes to oil. As always, that spring is gonna go where the oil is. And this is gonna go where there is no oil and we don't want any. We'll get that out there. Behind there, there will be a washer. There it is there, we'll clean that up. And there should be an anti-friction bush as well. Okay, so once we've got that anti-friction bush out, I'm just gonna make sure that that nice coating on the inside, that gray color is good. We haven't scratched it. I did use a seal pick to get behind it and work my way around. Eventually it pops out. I may have scratched it a couple of little spots. We'll tidy it up and make sure it's okay. But this one looks pretty good. It'll be all right. Make sure that goes back in there. We put it back together and we'll clean that up as well. Okay, we're gonna move on to the chrome section now. And we've got it in the vise with a rag around it. And I've also grabbed it in an area that doesn't actually do any of the work. This is the triple clamp area, but it's not always ideal to grab anything chrome in the vise. So we'll just look after it as much as we can. We've got a 17 mil spanner here. And obviously we cracked this earlier. I'm just going to wind it off. There is a spring behind it, so just be careful. We get this cap off. A little O-ring on there. Put that aside, and we have our spacer tube. And underneath that, we have a spring. Now I might not be able to grab the spring from here. Let's see if I can get it with a magnet. That's the space to wash on top of the spring. And that is the spring itself. Now it's a graduated spring. As you can see, it's quite open at the top. And as we go to the bottom, it starts to get closer and closer together. And that's when we start to bottom out our suspension. So we get that out, we'll give that a clean. It looks pretty good. And we have our damper rod at the bottom. We're gonna to have to tip that out, I reckon. Okay, with that tipped out, we'll put that aside. And here's what we got. It's got a little uh, wear band on it or like a seal ring, it's a Teflon style one, which can go again. And there is a small spring as well. We have a small spring there and this goes to the bottom of our rod there. So that sits inside that chrome piece there. We're gonna inspect all that, clean it, and we'll just put it back together. So this is it all fully apart, other than just cleaning everything and replacing, of course, the two seals. There's not much else we need to do. We just need to check the chrome here to make sure there's no nicks or scratches. And if there are, we can use a little bit of scotch blight like this, and we just go around as we go down. We don't want to go up and down or just around. We want to sort of go around as we go up and down, just to make sure we don't end up with any vertical scratches where oil can pass through. And we check it out and just make sure that there's no nicks or burrs. And then we can basically put it all back together with our new seals and fill it up with oil. Okay, reassembling. First thing we need to put in is, of course, the bush. I'm gonna use a little bit of fork oil. Just got a little bit of the fork oil here. We're just gonna lubricate the bush, make sure it's all on there. And it should be a pretty much a slip fit. If it's not, we can give it a bit of a tap home. We'll see how we go. There we go, that pushes in pretty well. So we'll sit that in there, and I'll give it a little bit more fork oil. Excellent, that's very good. Happy about that. Then we have our spacer washer. That one goes in next against the aluminium of the housing there. Now we have the seal last. Now it's a little bit different than the seal that came out. We have a spring on both sides, but the double lip goes on the inside still. We'll be hitting against this face here. And you see it's quite a bit deeper on that side. So that goes in that way around, get it started. Pretty much push most of the way home by hand. And I'm just gonna use a little I've got a 30 mil socket here. It's good enough fit. We're just gonna tap it home. Okay, well now it's home because we should be able to fit the circlip without any dramas at all. 
That sounded pretty good. Same thing, we'll put a little bit more of the oil just to help everything go together nicely. So it clips in, we're happy, everything's where it should be. That's pretty much built for now. We'll build the other half of the chrome and then we can put it all together. Okay, so we've got the chrome section back in the vise again. I've put a rag around it, trying to protect the chrome as much as we possibly can. We're gonna start with this section here. It's obviously gonna have the spring back on it. We're gonna drop the whole thing down. Got a little bit of oil just on this wear band here. I'm just gonna drop it down the hole. There it goes. We'll just guide that in and hopefully it pops out the bottom. There it goes, pops out the bottom. It should spring off the bottom because the spring is still on it. We'll stick that back in the vise. Okay, next down the hole, we once again have the graduated spring. We need to make sure the tight coils go at the bottom. Then we have our little spacer ring. That looks good. Then we have our main spacer here. And then our cap will go on top. Now we can change this O-ring if we want. It's probably a good idea to do so. And then we can screw that down on top. Okay, we're gonna put this on the end of here. A little bit of oil around our chrome just to help it go in. We're gonna drop the whole thing into the barrel. Should feel it come to a stop at the end. Now we wanna get the screw in the end, a little bit of Loctite on the screw, and we're just gonna tighten it up, and then we'll pull the spring back out so we can fill it with oil. Okay, a little bit of Loctite on the screw here. Just the low break, loose stuff, nothing crazy. I'm just gonna thread this in the bottom. And the torque on this screw is 15 foot pounds. Cool, that's at 15 foot pounds. We'll stand it up, we can fill it with oil. Okay, when it comes to filling them with oil, we take the spring back out. The spring was only in there so we could tighten up that bottom bolt. So take that back out and we're going to fill it with 150 mils of oil and that should equate to around about eight inches from the top. So we'll get that spring out, our washer, our spacer and the cap and that's going to go all the way to the bottom as it did there. We want eight inches of oil from the top to the oil level. We're going to pump it up and down, remove any air and make sure that we have eight inches from here to the oil level. The higher you fill it, the harder the shocks are gonna be. So if, if you have eight inches of oil and it's too soft and you're bottoming out your shocks, seven inches, six inches, whatever you need to do before the bike will bottom out, depends on how heavy you are and what you're doing with the bike. Now here's 150 mils, but let's see, I've got 350 mils here and we'll determine just how much we're gonna use. Okay, as mentioned before, we're gonna go eight inches from the top to where the oil starts. Now we have the chrome rod all the way down and I've been advised to put in 150 milliliters of oil. I think that's a good place to start. So we'll put in the 150 mils and we give it a good measure here and it was bang on eight inches. It's just putting oil on the end of the tape measure. So once you're happy with that level, we just stroke it up and down, releasing any air, give it five or six, nice and slowly, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom and all the way to the top. we we'll just get rid of any air that could possibly be in that oil. We wanna get the level as correct as possible. Once we're finished, return it to the very bottom and we'll re-measure it and make sure it's still the eight inches. As you can see here, I consumed 150 milliliters of oil and it was bang on. We've re-measured here. And I'm still seeing a little bit of oil on the end of the tape measure, meaning we are still at that eight inches. If you wanna add any more oil, make them a little bit stiffer, you can. Of course, we're fitting the spring here. The spring obviously is sitting out the top. You need to lift the chrome rod, fit that washer, and also fit the spacer as well before fitting the top cap. Make sure the washer is sitting where it should. Spacer goes in, then we fit the top cap. I'm not gonna torque it for now. We'll torque it when it's on the bike. 
We'll just make sure it's tight, a little bit of oil on the O-ring, and we'll just wind it all the way home with a 17 millimeter spanner. Just nip it up tight so we can torque it when it's on the bike. Just make sure we don't forget to torque it. If you are going to torque it now, it is 16 foot pounds is the spec for that top cap. It's actually not that very that tight. We'll see 16 foot pounds quite easily just with a spanner of this size. Okay, lastly, we've got the dust seal to go on here. It, uh, it's pretty loose fit. We can basically just push it all the way home and just push it into its home by hand. They're not too tight. And there we go. Okay, we'll push the dust cover all the way down. Just engage it with the bottom here. Like that. Cool. All right, drop that back on the bike. Okay, same as when we pulled it apart, we are gonna stop a little bit early, about there, and we're gonna tighten this up so we can tighten that top cap. The top cap here is 16 foot-pounds. Pretty much already there, which is good. And then we can loosen that pinch bolt off again. And that can go all the way home now. Now we just stop so it's level with the top of that triple clamp. Just nice and level there under the handlebars. Just twist everything to make sure it's gonna be in the right spot. Yep, everything works out well. We can nip up our bolts and then we'll torque them down. Okay, the torque on these bolts here, we have 20 foot pounds on this top one. And we have 23 foot pounds on the bottom one. Let's them tightened up, we'll just double check them. Okay, with that all in, we'll move the boot all the way to the top of that triple clamp and tighten it off in the right spot. Well, that's pretty much it. We'll do the next one now. This is the caliper side one. When you put it back together, make sure you put your brake caliper back on, put your wheel back on, tighten up that axle nut and go and test the bike out. If your forks do bottom out, we can remove the top cap and add a little bit more oil. Make sure we add even amount of oil to each side and go and test it out again. Other than that, thank you very much for watching.